All right, guys, I made this video to try to help you understand how to take apart an AUX 66 motor. This is a 3.1 liter, 200 horsepower V6 and uh, blew up this cylinder here. You can see the scoring on the walls and the cylinder's kind of wrecked. So hopefully in this video, you'll get some help on how to repair this. So my audio died and I'm going to just kind of go through this with voiceover. Basically, I'm talking about what you need. So make sure you have sandwich bags or gallon Ziplocs, some paper and a Sharpie. When you take off parts, you wanna be able to write them down, put them in a bag and categorize them. Also, make sure you have a drill handy. You can take bolts off with the drill. Do not put bolts back on with the drill. That's a no-no. All right, so first here, we're gonna start with the lower unit. Um, you don't have to take your prop off if you don't want to. Uh, so I leave mine on. That's kind of what I'm describing here. I'm just going to leave it on because you can turn it. If your engine is seized and you can't turn it, then you might need to uh, take it off. So you got these three bolts on the front side. You have three on the back. And I'm going to start by taking off the bolts here on the front side. So there's six total in the black. There is a fin below, so just kind of make sure you have a short socket set so you can get to those. And the harder bolt is this one up here at the top. So I have this ratcheting crescent wrench here, and we're gonna slide those on and get those bolts off the rest of the way. Once you get those six off, you've got your trim tab here. There's also another hole underneath that stores another bolt. Um, but in order to get the trim tab off, which you definitely need to do, you gotta take this little plastic rubber grommet off, and then it'll expose that hole, and then you can get that bolt off. So what I do is I take this long ratchet, got an extension from Harbor Freight, Stick it down in there and unscrew it and you'll see that trim tab start to uh, wiggle down. And that is the only bolt that's connected to the trim tab. But there is one more underneath. So make sure you take a look under there and ratchet off that one bolt underneath. And then you just get the last bolt in its own separate hole that is not covered by the trim tab. When you're taking this thing off, you wanna just give the fin a couple gentle whacks. You'll see it start to separate from the uh, top of the motor. And then you just wiggle it a little bit and that baby will come out. Make sure you have two hands on it or this thing is going to slide right down. And then as you're pulling it out, keep the rod super straight. That's your uh, gear. And if that gets chewed up, you're gonna have problems. So slide it out and go set that away. All right, so what I'm describing here is kind of what to disconnect from the motor. So I've got some pliers here. We're gonna take out the pins for the shift lever and the throttle lever. So right there, that's the throttle lever connected to the throttle plates. And right down here behind this electrical connection is the shift lever. And so we're gonna pull the pins on both of those and free them up off the motor. As you can tell, the pins are back in place. That's so I don't lose them. Now you can pretty much see everything that's coming from the boat to the motor. And that's where you need to figure out all your disconnections. So you have this little main uh, power here. You have this little zip tie that's holding down a bunch of the other power. Um, so to get the main power off, you have a little collar sleeve. You're going to turn that, slide it off over the peg, and then you're just going to start separating with your fingers there, and it should come right apart. And then you've got a whole bunch of odds and ends. This right here is a uh, vacuum for the shift. So we're going to pull that vacuum cable off there. And then you've got all these different color labeled electrical connections. So there's a blue one, there's a couple plastic, uh, colored ones and those all need to be removed Then you have your power cables one is going to the fuse box and one is going to the starter motor um, So I'm going to take the two off the starter motor and take the one out of the fuse box The disassemble the fuse box you take off this gray piece. It's just a clip Just unclip it and set it to the side and you have two screws on the black box Once you get both screws off that cover should just come right off and just wiggle it Here we go and then I'm taking pictures. You want to know how all this stuff goes back? Take a picture. To disconnect the starter, you just remove that little uh, wire collar and then you can disconnect the bolt. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now with a crescent ratchet. And then same for the top. So I'm going to remove that starter bolt up there at the top. The bolts themselves will go right back into the holes so we don't lose them. And then the last one is hidden kind of behind some of these wires here in the fuse box. We're gonna go ahead and remove that one with this green ratchet. And after we get that off, the last piece is this little plug. 
it's in a little black box and there's no clip so you just kind of grab the wire and slowly wiggle it out and eventually she'll pull free and then the last piece is on the back of the motor here uh, you got some ground cables that are grounding out near the spark plugs you need to disconnect those my microphone died during some point of that so i apologize i will uh, do a voiceover but we've taken care of everything now we're on the fuel side so if you go back over to the other side of the motor you can trace back you have two lines going to your motor and if you know what both those lines are it's pretty easy to figure out one is your oil one is your uh, fuel I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the fuel line right at the inline fuel filter it's just a little plastic piece and all you got to do is just clip that off and work it off so there's that and oil is the same way just clip off a little zip tie holding it there and pull off the only last thing that you need to worry about is the trim and tilt I'm having a hard time getting you guys the best angle because the, the kicker motor is in the way but this right here is the trim and tilt and right here is a little switch that's connected to your wiring harness so you want to disconnect that switch and then you can disconnect both of these 10 millimeter bolts you got to get this skirting off that's how you get the motor out so there's a couple bolts inside the pan there's a couple on the front so we're going to take those front ones off i'm not going to label this because it's going to go right back in the hole so there's one i got to get the one on the other side same spot i'm not going to put the camera there pops forward and slides around the motor like so, take my two bolts, slide them back in the holes, go set them by your lower unit. Now this skirting comes off similar fashion. You got one bolt right here, and you have one on the exact same other side. Then you also have two bolts inside the drip pan for the motor, your motor pan if you will. Again, you can use your drill for disassembly only with this. Okay, so you got those, and then freehand us here for a minute. Here's the back of the motor. You look right down in here. This is your motor bolt. And that right there, you see that tiny little screw? There's two of those. I know the lighting's not good, but it's right here. There's two of those. Those bolts got to come out. If you don't have one of these, get one. It is a um, bendy extension. So you can bend it around things and still twist off bolts. I'm going to stick that down in there. Hit that bolt. Boom. Now I don't need a straight shot, especially on this inner bolt. This is a tough one. plate plate just came off again flip this thing upside down stick your bolts inside of it and I just actually lost one in the engine pan another tool you got to have three bucks Harbor Freight metal in the end slide it in there bolt captured now I don't have to lose that bolt or remember it later. Okay, these are actually the, the power head bolts. You got four on the other side. Let me get my, my drill on it. They're long, super long. A little bit of water in there still. That's okay. It's supposed to be water in there. Not that big of a deal. Those two bolts, right up here, that both of those bolts got to come out. Those are engine mount bolts. And there's two of the same on the other side. 
So for reference, you're right there. There's the motor. So right up and underneath. Two bolts I forgot. Right under there. Let me get those out. Holding it on. And then I think that's it. Okay, so what we have here is a uh, one ton Harbor Freight crane. Basically you have this little hook right here on the back of your motor. That's where you want to connect it to. So you gotta go down just a hair in order to clip on. So when you lift it up, I want you to notice the seal that pops while you're lifting. There's the seal. So that's it. Motor's up now. Now you don't want to bring it up all the way yet. Because you gotta make sure that you've disconnected everything. So just kind of get it hanging there, like so, and then start to take a look underneath to make sure that you don't have any cables connected. Now we're disconnected, we just pull back slowly. Not to rock it too much. This is an engine hoist. So we're trying to get it on the stand. So we've attached the stand mount right here, uh, which will be going uh, in that red cart right there. But what you want to try to do first before you create a huge mess, sorry, I know the lighting is terrible on my face. Maybe that's a little better. So what you want to do first before you create a huge mess is get rid of the fuel and the oil because that's what's going to drip all over everything when you turn the motor sideways. Right here, this is the oil injection pump. So uh, we're going to take this off, but this right here is how it gets fed with oil. So we're going to unclip this, and then we're going to just drain this tube into a uh, Pennzoil or oil container. Just cut the zip ties. When you're putting this back together, make sure you get the zip ties. What you want to do is kind of two-hand it and put it right into the container. And then if you peel the top off, you get a lot better flow out of it. And that's going to fill up that container. All right, so while you have a helper draining this, you can get a 10 millimeter ratchet on the oil tank, engine, engine mounted oil tank that is, and then start taking off these 10 millimeter bolts. Okay, right here you have the electrical or the oil pump filter. There's that. And then in the back of the motor, you're attached with a zip tie for the rest of the electrical. We're gonna disconnect that zip tie. There's one more 10 millimeter bolt right behind all the cabling back here. And that's the last bolt for the oil tank. You got a vacuum tube up at the top. And then the last piece is the, the pump switch. It's the override. And that basically, when the tank is empty, you flip the switch and it will pull oil into the tank without the engine being on. And that is basically it for the oil tank. Here's the fuel system. Fuel comes into the inline fuel filter goes down into the low pressure pumps. These are what usually are leaking that flood your engine and cause it to lock up and not start when you are uh, out on the boat after fishing for a few hours. This will flood your engine. It can also cause lean conditions. This is a great thing to check. Um, so that is where the fuel gets lifted up, low pressure pumps, and then it gets piped into this here VST tank. The VST tank holds then a mixture of oil and fuel and then that is directly injected into the fuel rail and into the injectors which feed each cylinder. So to drain the VST tank you need to drain this bottom screw here. I've already drained it while the motor's on the boat but I'm going to just unloosen this because the angle has now pushed all the rest of the fuel down in there. There's about a glass measuring cups worth of fuel in the VST tank so that's what I've always used. And then you just twist this cap and then it'll come out just dripping down my hand. Just 
there's the rest of the fuel. Again, just a great idea to drain this. Now you can see it's kind of bluish, greenish in color. That is the fuel mixed with the oil. Take our little cup again. It's not quite completely full. And we'll snap off this tie right here. Don't use a drill while you're dealing with the fuel system. The drill creates sparks, whether you know it or not, in the brush. If it's brushless, I'm not 100% sure, but don't risk it with fuel. You don't want to catch yourself on fire. Again, I'm leaving the screws where they came out of. And then this little red piece down here, if you have water in your fuel, that'll float. So then you know if you've got a condition that will uh, cause an issue. So clearly that's not what's happening here. Okay, so you got most of the fuel out now. You can either take the low pressure fuel pump off um, now and deal with that with the VST tank. Probably a good way to do things. Then you have literally this whole side of the motor disassembled. And then all you have to deal with is the other side. But uh, what I'll probably do is just take the VST tank off and then I'll end up disassembling the pumps later. Take the VST tank off. Again, we're still not using a drill for obvious reasons. I feel all over my hand. And you have three bolts. They also have washers on the back side. So you have one down there at the bottom. Then you have two up here at the top. We've dealt with VST tanks before. The uh, usual problem for like surging or a motor that's got fuel issues is because there's a filter in here and uh, it picks up the fuel and sends it to the injectors through the high pressure fuel pump and that typically is what gets clogged and causes your fuel rail to uh, not act quite right because it's not getting enough fuel so it surges or it starves or whatnot. That's a washer from the back that's come off. So when you twist these off, there's a washer on the front and the back. Okay, now the VST is disconnected, but it is still connected with a bunch of fuel lines and vacuum lines. You can leave the uh, fuel rail attached to this, but you will have to disconnect all of your um, injectors. One mistake that you're gonna make is not labeling the injectors. You wanna know exactly which one goes top to bottom. Here's the oil connection. Here's a vacuum connection. With a vacuum connection, I would just trace it where it goes, peel it off, and then label it, because clearly there's another vacuum line right there. So you wanna know where each one goes. These gray hoses are fuel with the red line in them. So that's disconnected. Now you can kind of see the back here. This is oil. We're gonna go ahead and disconnect that. Then get your container again. Just the oil off. I'll just drip for a second. And back here, this is your vacuum. Then on top of the VST right here, you have these two little connectors and uh, you can actually disconnect those up here. So I wouldn't worry about taking the screws off of that. And then you have all your fuel injectors to get off the rail. So there's the rails free. And then the last order of business is to clip this zip tie, which is keeping this all hung up right now. And then you have these two right here, disconnect, and now your VST tank is completely off. All you have left on this side are your oil injection pump, your three fuel pumps, and then you have your TPS control right here. This is what tells the engine um, where your throttle position is. And then up here is all the connections for your stator and all that other stuff, oil link rod. So this is good enough. You've gotten all the systems that are gonna leak off and now you can put it on an engine stand, which I will show you right now. So we have it bolted into the bottom of the engine. We have four bolts. Our bolts are a little long. You should just get the right size bolts, but we're using washers to kind of stack them up. Once you get these down locked really tight, you have your little base here. And then what you can do is you have a pin and you have a, a cotter pin essentially for this. And what you will do is lift this up 
and you'll slide it into here and then find a place for that top pin to go preferably where it's even when you set it on the ground it's lined up has this little handle and this is what makes it so it doesn't slip out and then you just cotter pin the back of that so it won't come off it's locked in there really good so now what you're going to do is turn the motor this way get the wheels and the fat part of your hoist down and keep lowering the engine will sit and then you can rotate the motor using this handle and the goal is to lift the motor up if you can and let it get start getting vertical or horizontal rather the crane still has most of the weight but you're helping it okay something to be wary of is things falling out of your motor but these little plugs help line up the fuel rail they're kind of these little gold plugs anyway make sure you don't let those fall out you can stick them back in your fuel rail now you have your motor on the stand make sure you get yourself the essentials first and then your tools and you can come sit down here and have a little fun i would say easiest thing to do is going to be to take off the lp fuel pumps it's these guys, they all have a 10 millimeter bolt and there's two of them that press them up against the motor. They'll largely leave these lines connected. There's no real reason to take them apart. Just make your life easier routing everything when you put it back together. When you have stuff like this, it's just like free, like I know this goes to oil. I'm going to pull this out. I'm gonna go connect this to the oil tank real fast. Here are all my LP fuel pumps. Once you got one disconnected, they should all come with it. Just keep that piece together. These are little gaskets, and I just replaced these. So I'm gonna hold on to all three. Be gentle getting them off, and you can reuse them. That one, maybe not. This one, for sure, we can. So we got those. Now your LP stuff is taken apart. So now that we have most of this apart, this is where it's a good idea to take a photo. What you're trying to do is make sure you know where all these cables are routed. So this is all wiring, okay? That can come off later when we start to take like the stator off. And all these back here, those are vacuum lines. Get the bug out of here. Your oil injection pump is two screws right here and here. Fairly easy to take those off here. Probably some sort of gasket. Okay. So that's off. Really no gasket. Take my snips. Cut those cables. Now your TPS is free. You're still tied on here with a couple things, but for the most part, you are free. The power side. Oh man, all your electrical, this is your O2 sensor, your starter, kind of your fuse box, if you will. The goal, <laughs> ideally, is to leave as much of this stuff connected as possible, um, although not easy. So, we got this bolt, and this bolt. I think that is all. There's another bolt back here. Up underneath. There we go. Now she's free. Starter is connected to this flywheel cover. It's kind of a crying thing. There we go. There's the starter. Again. All three bolts are back in their happy place. The uh, O2 sensor has a cover and then it is connected by a plug here. Um, that plug is just sort of buried in here. This kind of stuff is easy to disconnect and reconnect and find. So I'm just going to do that and then take off the cover. 
So, your O2 sensor has this little rubber grommet over the top of it. Again, cuts the zip tie. And then this thing, I'm telling you, is like a huge pain in the butt to get off. So I just kind of roll it back like that and then try to get my finger under there and keep pushing it back. Mine's a lot weaker than yours is because I've done this a few times. And all the cable is just kind of slip out the side there. And then you should be able to work the cover up and off the O2 sensor. So there's the cover. There's a little cable piece. And then your O2 sensor is right here. And we are going to take the whole O2 sensor off. So going to break those seals loose. There's just three screws, 10 millimeter as well. So O2 sensor is off. It's going to hang a little bit. It's a uh, gasket, if you will. And that needs to be replaced to properly seal this. This right here is the sniffer tube. Sniffer tube is basically what tells your engine um, what the fuel is looking like and the air is looking like. So that uh, piece should not be lost. So make sure you pull that out of the engine and you leave that with your O2 sensor parts. So we have this to disconnect right here. Most of these connectors, it should be known, you pry the tabs up and then pull out instead of push down. Some are push down, some are pull up. This is the last piece right here that disconnects basically the entire other side. Um, so that piece is disconnected, this is disconnected. Again, all this stuff down here is air tubes. Right here you have your linkage for your throttle plates. That just basically pops off here at the bottom. So that's pretty easy to disconnect. You can leave this on. And then last order of business is getting the sensors off and disconnecting the rest of these wires from this side. And then we just have the ECU and the spark plugs. Gotten some good pictures of it. So my goal is just to pull this fuse box and then see if I can get the fuse box to detach from the motor without having to disconnect a whole ton of the wiring. And a good trick for this is if you loosen some bolts and then you wiggle the box, you'll see what bolts are moving and what aren't inside the box. If they aren't moving, 90% of the time they're attached to the block. They could be attached to the plastic, but usually the screws are attached to the block. Like see this right here? These aren't moving, so I know for sure those are attached to the block. That means they got to be disconnected. But most of that is kind of freeing up. Get down here. Well, but we are very close to getting the electric off. These ground plugs, which are 10 millimeter, are kind of the last thing holding this electrical bundle on. There's the other bolt. There's that frickin' piece. Now that's off. That is the last piece on this side. And now you have the top and the, the back of the motor to get off. So there's another sensor right there. Disconnected. And then this stuff runs up here. And now it starts getting into the back of the motor. We're away from most of the fuel issues. You feel semi-comfortable using a screw driver or drill, electric screwdriver or drill. And those are the backing plate for the ECU. We're going to try to take off this ECU without taking off much of the other things. So you're just disconnecting the spark plugs. You disconnect the ECU. Oops. I mean it. This is what I'm going for. Right here. There we 
go. Bingo. So that's most of that right there in one. And you have these little connectors up here. Go to the thermo sensors. Disconnect those if we can. There we go. Another sensor right here. And now, about all of your electronics are disconnected. You've got a couple more grounds that you can go around and find. Okay. Most of the ECU is off. These are the mounts for the ECU. When you have a ton of wires that were together and you want to make sure that all the grounds stay together, you just grab them all, put a zip tie through, and then zip them. Now you know all those go together. Let's connect to this. This is a water hose, water pump, if you will, connected to the poppet valve. There we go. Boom. So we're almost all off now. This is the poppet valve right here. But damn near stripped that motor completely clean. I'm going to show you taking apart the head so you guys can see what that looks like. In parts are 12 millimeter bolts. So all of these are the head bolts. Once you have all of those out, the head is actually free, but it's stuck on with the gasket. I like to take like a flat head screwdriver, and this is the water jacket, this is the head. You get it back there, and it just pops straight off. Now you can keep all the bolts in place. So that is most of the breakdown. I'll take off a couple more sensors, and then we'll call it a night. Take the thermostats. We don't want to, but kind of don't have a choice. They're looking as good as new. Not a problem with that. There's one. This right here is the poppet valve. So this is uh, part of the water system. I guess we could take this off. This is the shift assembly. So you can shift the motor from forward to neutral in the reverse. Here we are back at it for day two. And what I've already done is taken off this uh, nut here. Basically, you need a 30 six millimeter socket for the nut and then you get one of these it's just like a flywheel tool stick that into these two holes here and then put the uh, crowbar or whatever you're going to use on the other side pry bar and uh, twist this nut off i used a mallet to hammer it for the first you know couple inches of torque so now what i'm going to do is take this puller here and basically um, push out the flywheel just like so and then you have your puller so you've got good pressure and then you can take your ratchet again you might have to get your flywheel tool on it, if you can, so that it doesn't twist on you.
There we go. That's the pop you're looking for. And then there's a magnet in there, kind of holding it on. It's got to be stronger than the magnet. There's a little key too. Wood drift key that goes in there. So now that that's off, I believe this is your fader. These 10 millimeter bolts. Four of those. I'll get this little cap off. This little piece. And then it comes undone. Like so. There's a woodruff key. Right there. So that part is keeping the uh, flywheel on. So you've got two more 10 millimeter bolts right here. There's the first, there's the second. That's what's holding the stator in. And that is the last piece to all your electrical. And the last part of this disassembly is this little cap holder holds the stator in four Phillips around that. Nope, three. I thought there was four. Three. Okay, so now you're completely disassembled. This right here is the crank right here. Um, so basically now we have to take from top down to get into here. Um, but that side is completely disassembled. So we need to do the back now. Balancer. Crankshaft balancer. Alright, there's that. There's that. One more. There it is. Not that hard to get off there. Got this little cover plate down in here. Those are 10 millimeter screws. You're gonna take the top off all the way down. So you just start disassembling down and then remove that last. I don't wanna force it. Now we just need to do a top down removal. I'll try to get you guys a uh, good view of that. Camera stopped recording on me. So we are down to, uh, this is the crankcase. We just removed the reed valves. Those are these guys right here. They slip in like so. They're only connected by these two screws right here in the middle. That's how we got that off. Hoping you guys saw the throttle plate get disassembled. But that sits on top of there. So this is where your air intake goes. This is your throttle plates, and then there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen screws that go around the outside of this. That lifts off. There's a gasket, and then the throttle plate comes off, or the reed valves come off. So after you get the throttle plates off, then you can take the reed valves off. And these ones, a little trickier, the way that they come out of here just like so and you have all these tubes don't forget to remove these tubes they just kind of connect to the sides of each port that's what those are and you remove top of the crankcase crankcase has these two nuts here and we are down to the bones of it now boys and girls but we have two bolts here two bolts here two bolts here and two more here once you get those off, you have a couple more on the sides of the crankcase. The crankcase is sealed up really, really tight. So uh, you wanna make sure that uh, you undo all those bolts. Again, great idea now to take photos of where these tubes are wired to so that when you pull them off, they go back together fairly easily. So what I'll do, disconnect these tubes at the bottom and over here, 
the bottom, just like so. This tube is connected to both top sides of the crankcase, so that can just hang there. And then what I do is leave the big bolts connected and go around the outside and take the small bolts first. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven on each side of the crank. Okay, so those are the seven on the crank. And then uh, you got some bigger bolts. I think those are 14 millimeter. Got these right here. There we go. That one's broke loose. That one's just broke loose. There we go. You have the two in the middle. And break those three. One more. There we go. Now, this upper crank is free, but you have a seal on it, so you got to kind of wiggle it a little bit. Just make sure you're free on all your bolts. There we go. Now we're free. All right. There's your crank. All right, so we're back to finish the disassembly. So these bolts on top, they're star nuts and I'm using a 5 16 to get them off. Now, a couple words of caution. These are put on with a torque wrench. So you can't use a small wrench and you don't want to hammer these. They don't have enough surface area to really grip. So uh, to get them out, I've got this adapter on a long curl bar that goes down to that very small size. This is the only socket I have that'll fit this bolt. So that's what you do. And then put it on there and slowly apply pressure and it'll break free and then you can twist off like so. Now this is where you really get into the labeling thing, okay? So you wanna know what cylinder this goes in and where it goes back, okay? So that race is fairly smooth. There's no scoring. Drop it in a bag. These uh, bearings for the connecting rod just kinda spin on there. Very easy to take off. Drop those in a bag. Be careful not to lose any of the bearings of this thing. They do slip out, so don't lose them. There we go. There's that. Okay. Now, you don't want this connecting rod and um, piston to be in the way. You're gonna take your fingers and just push, and like I said, make sure you have your hand on the other side, and that's gonna slide the piston right out the bottom of the tube. You guys see that? So I have the flywheel at the top, cylinder one, two, three, four, five, and six, the balancer at the bottom. Number four is one I threw a wrist pin on previously. Number six is the one that just blew. So that's how I've written it down so I know which cylinder is what. So the one I just pulled out is the wrist pin cylinder. I'm going to label that cylinder four. So we've gotten those out. All the other ones are, are kind of down, right? So you can grab the journal of where you just pulled. Kind of give it a push. Now you have the two blown cylinders. Or the two uh, with one is the blown cylinder. I'm going to go ahead and keep rotating. Because I want to take that out last. And now we have these two. So this will happen where the cylinder slips down in here and the bearings are way down in there. Um, you can tilt the connecting rod. It'll spit out here 
and then you can pull both those bearings off before they fall through the actual cylinder. As you're taking this apart, especially as you're getting near to the, um, the one that you blew, you're going to start picking up more metal chunks. I can feel it on my fingers. That's the uh, head that's been blown apart. Well, that's going to happen with that dead cylinder. It's not being held in there by anything. Connecting rod has a gouge in it. Hopefully the journal does not. That journal feels fine. I am worried about that journal on four. There's a significant burr in it. So that's either going to need repaired or we're going to buy a new crankshaft. As you can see, it's a blown piston. I can see the piston ring pin right here, but I cannot see it for the other one. So what could have happened is this piston ring shifted inside of there and uh, caused the total failure. This is the last step. Got everything out. Last step is to basically lift this off. The crank comes out. Little stuck in there. That's it. I'm going to just kind of screw it up. And you have those bearings in the middle that typically don't come off, but it did. So it's two bearings and the race, and then this on the outside. Those are pretty tight in there. Not stuck by any means. So that's a complete disassembly of the Aux 66 motor. And I'll flip it over so you can just see kind of what the other side looks like now. We'll see. I plan on taking this in and having them look it over and we'll go from there and see if uh, she's fixable or not. But you could disassemble this a little bit more. You could take off the a uh, thermostat cover plate, you could take about this water jacket in the back, but um, yeah, I'm not going to do that because I'm not sure this motor is going to be fixed. So, hope that helped you guys, gave you some insight as to how to take apart the motor. Thanks for watching.